What's up everyone? Welcome back. Uh, thanks for clicking on the video. Somebody requested to see the sump and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, sorry to disappoint. It's not the neatest sump um, you've ever seen. I, I intended to be neater with the cords and, and control board and everything uh, but it just didn't happen. But uh, I've got this flashlight in here hoping to have it not be so so pink from the refugium light. But to start off with, this roller mats a Clara CSK 5000 um, Gen 3. It's been working awesome. Uh, one thing you gotta do if you ever use this product, um, you want the dirty roller to ride on this acrylic. Um, if you don't, the pressure pulls on the other side over here and causes it to bend. And it's not that big a deal, but it creates like a ridge in the middle of the dirty roll and it kind of rolls funky. I've had to kind of neck it down from uh, one and a half inch all the way down to an inch with a couple bushings here, uh, but it's been working good. The skimmer is a Royal Exclusive Deluxe 200, I believe. Um, kind of a high-end skimmer, um, but I, I had the same skimmer for years that I bought with the first tank I ever bought. Um, so this is only the second skimmer I've bought, not including some hang on the backs from the other tanks. Um, but it's, it works great. Uh, I've got it set on about 34, kind of low, and it, it pulls a lot of stuff out. More stuff than I would think considering I have a roller mat. Um, but it's got a... Uh, be an animal overflow on the tank so it's got three overflows and I don't know if you can see but the, the middle overflow does get a little bit of water so not everything goes through the roller mat which I think is kind of how it's supposed to be um, and then and I, I will show you the tank a little bit but I've got the settings changed so it's gonna be super super blue this is actually a cabinet underneath a little 38 gallon Lagoon style tank. I may or may not set it up. I was kind of thinking it was a tank I already had and I was kind of thinking um, Lagoon style Mangrove tank possibly right here in the back side of this tank since there's nothing really going on um, But these are the the controllers and stuff for the skimmer and two core 20s I believe um, That you can kind of see in the background over there. You're not gonna be able to see those from the other side um, and you can see all the plumbing. Uh, I've got check valves on each one of those. Unions where I should be able to take it apart if necessary. Some salt creep down here. And then the control board, you know, I, I intended to make a little nicer. Um, I mean, it's not terrible, but still got that mess of cords down there. Uh, and then over here we've got the refugium. Now it is going to be really pink. Um, so this is fed by uh, the smaller Vectra pump S1, S2 pump, I think. It came with another older DC pump and it just went out on me. So basically this was designed not by me um, for bio pellets I think they're called uh, they were really popular a long time ago some people still use them um, but it wasn't coming with the tank and I was like you know what let me let me buy this setup that he kind of designed it's got a slit cut on down the whole side of of that one inch pipe there and it pumps water in and over this overflow as it comes around the corner from the drain section and it works really well to keep the the chato spinning kato chato whatever um and, and i think there's benefit to that you know you're, you're just hitting more sides of it allowing it to grow more um and you know keeping it off the bottom i gotta get in here soon and scrape up some of this hair algae i just did it i don't know a month or two ago but of course it grows back and you gotta be careful i think i've read that the hair algae will actually outcompete, you know, your your chato. So you want to kind of keep it to a minimum. 
Over here, we've got the Trident, uh, which I've been loving. I really liked having having it test all the time. You know, I, I do manual tests with Hannah checkers and stuff every once in a while just to, to make sure. Um, but it's been great. I look at it all the time to see what it's doing. Um, and then you can see, go ahead and move, the calc reactor, calc stir, whatever you want to call it. It's an ice cap one. It's the biggest one they make. Um, have a little trouble dialing it in. Um, the controller is a little weird because it goes up to 12 volts, but you can turn the knob way past it. Um, had the stir bar jump off a couple times, but once you get it set up, uh, it does really well. I've got them plus one of my ATOs, kind of a weird setup there, but on these Casa um, timers you get on Amazon, I think they were like 25 bucks for four of them. They've worked really well. They connect to your Wi-Fi. I can turn stuff on and off from when I'm at work, you know, um, which I have used a little bit. Sometimes if I want to bump the pH up a little bit, I can kick on the ATO that feeds the Calquasa reactor and just give it a little boost. Um, but yeah, I, I probably could have done it a different way, but basically I've got two uh, Tunzi osmolators set up as you can see and basically the the calcwasser ato is a little little bit higher um than the freshwater ato the sensor is a little bit higher so that when my timer kicks on the calcwasser ato it feels a little bit higher so that the freshwater always thinks it's got enough water and I'm only using the Calquasser ATO overnight for 12, 13 hours when I want it to run. And that's been doing a really good job um, not only keeping up with alkalinity and calcium, but really helping boost the pH. And I don't know if you guys have seen, you know, the new kind of stuff that's kind of pointing more towards chasing pH and, you know, when I was learning, and still you'll see people saying it today, you know, don't worry about your pH, you know, don't chase pH, I don't, I don't ever look at pH, but, you know, there's a lot of evidence that corals, stony corals grow, you know, a lot faster at a higher pH, um, so I, I see, you know, benefit to that. Between the refugium and then running the calcwasser overnight, um, you know, I'm keeping my pH between like 8.1, usually more like 8.2 up to, you know, 8.3, 8.35. Um, and the corals seem to really, really like it. Um, so yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it. You know, a sump's a sump. I will show you the tank here, but like I said, settings are, are different. So we're all blued out. Um, not as nice with all that blue light uh, but that's that's pretty much it guys thanks for watching thanks for all the new subscribers I think I've got another hundred subscribers over the last 28 days or almost a hundred um, subscribe uh, comment ask questions you know video suggestions anything you want to see any questions you have I appreciate you watching thanks guys